In this section, we can look at how the concentration uh, affects the rate. So we're going to do two labs. We're basically doing this, this kind of problem. Um, and you're, you're going to see this on the quiz. You're going to see this on the exam. This will be on the final, this sort of problem. If you remember one thing from Chem 2, this is, this is going to be it. So the concentration versus rate. So here we have a chart of different, um, it's, it's the same reaction. So we have this one reaction. And we're looking at changing one concentration of one reactant at a time and then measuring the rate. So here you can see we doubled from experiment one to experiment two. All we did was double the concentration for this, con this reactant and we kept this one constant. And then you can see that the rate is doubling. And then here we doubled it again we kept this one constant and the rate doubles again. Um, down here now we're holding these constant and now I double this concentration and then the rate doubles and then I double this concentration here again and the rate doubles. And so we're going to change one concentration at a time and try to figure out how does that affect the rate. And what we're going to try to find is something called the rate law. And so the rate law is this whole equation which relates the rate, which is in this table, right? Rate is just molar per second, so we have rate in this table. Um, and the concentrations, there's the concentrations. Uh, and then we have the rate constant. The rate constant um, is important and it's going to change with temperature. So as long as you don't change the temperature, the rate constant should be constant for each one of these experiments. That K should be the same. So we're going to eventually calculate the rate constant as well. So we're trying to find this rate law, which is not always necessarily um, related to the stoichiometry. You have to use, you have to do this experiment to figure out um, what the orders of the reaction are. So the order is the, the exponents here. So this is the general form of the, the rate law. Rate equals K times first reactant to the nth power and the second reactant to uh, the nth power. You could have more reactants. In lab, we're going to have three reactants. So we're going to find M, N, and P. And those orders of the reaction basically tell you how the concentration affects the rate. If it's first order, then if you double the concentration, you double the rate. If it's second order, if you double the concentration, you quadruple the rate. So we're going to look at how changing the concentration affects the rate, and then you'll be able to come up with the rate, um, the, the uh, orders of the reaction, and then you can solve for the rate constant. Um, you can also find the overall order of the reaction. You just have to add up M and N. So M plus N will give you the overall order. So. Let's try to do that with this problem. So how do we do that? Uh, the first thing you want to do is we'll just look at the, again, the general form of the, the rate law. You have something that looks like rate equals K times the first reactant to some power times the second reactant to some power. And so we're going to choose two experiments to compare and a whole bunch of things should cancel out of this equation. Um, and so the way you pick your experiments is you want one, concentration to stay the same while the other one is changing and then you're going to look at those rates and you're going to take a ratio of those rates so I'm going to do I'm going to do rate 2 over rate 1 so if I do rate 2 over rate 1 since rate 2 is the bigger that the um, the rate is bigger than this one I won't get a fraction if you don't mind fractions then do whatever the heck you want but I always put the bigger number on top so that I don't get a fraction. So I'm going to say, I'm going to compare rate 2 and rate 1 because these guys are staying the same and this one's changing. You could also compare um, 2 and 3 and 1 and 3. Any of those are fine. And then we'll, we'll compare 4, 5, and 6 um, for, to get the other order of the reactant. So the first goal that we're trying to solve here, the first thing we're trying to do is solve for M and N. So I'm going to do rate 2 over rate 1. Rate 2 over rate 1. And my rate 2 is right here. I get that right on the table. It's 10.8 times 10 to the negative 7. And rate is equal to K times the first reactant and second reactant. So I'm just reading those right off of this table. So I'm doing rate 2, so I want 0 0.02 and 0 0.2. And for rate 1, I take rate 1 over here, that's 5.4 times 10 to the negative 7. And then K times the first reactant and then the second reactant. First reactant is 0.01 and the second reactant is 0.2 and the raised to the nth power. Now if you're scared of those exponents, don't be scared of the exponents. I'm going to walk you through the math there. So 10.8 times 10 to the negative. So first do this. These are just numbers, right? 10.8 divided by 5.4. That gives you 2. K 
k over k, those cancel, right? It's the same, it's the same variable, it's gonna cancel. Um, 0.2 to the n divided by 0.2 to the n. So even though you don't know n, it's the it's gonna be the exact same number. N is the same variable. So then you're just left with here, with this. So 0.02 divided by 0.01 is two, and then you're raising this to the nth power. So there's a, a rule with exponents. Um, if it's to the same exponent, you can just divide the base if it's one over the other, and then raise it to that power. So now you have two equals two to the m. So now if you're not sure what to do, I'll give you a hint. The um, m, n, p, whatever those, those the orders of the reaction, I'm only ever gonna give you whole numbers. They could be fractions. They could totally be fractions. You have to do a log thing. We're just gonna make it easy. It's either gonna be zero, one, two, three, something like that, they're whole numbers. So plug it in. Two to the zeroth power gives you one. That's not two. Two raised to the first power gives you two. So we know that m here has to be one. So two raised to the one gives me two. So I found one order of the reaction. I'm going to do this again to find the to find n. Now I want to solve for n. So now that I know one, I know that it's this reaction is first order with respect to this reactant. Um, to compare the other one, now I want I want one where I'm going to find two reactions where these are being held constant and these are changing. I'm just going to do five and six because it's easier for me to read off the table. Five and six. So this guy is staying the same. And this one's doubling. And then I want to compare how does that affect the rate. And so when you look at these rates, since these are the two we're comparing, I'm going to put 6, rate 6, over rate 5, because rate 6 is a bigger number. Not that the 6 is bigger than the 5, it's that the 43.3 is bigger than the 21. These do not have to be in any particular order. They can be numbered however you want them to be. So when you're looking at which, which one to put on top, it's not six because six is bigger than five it's because the 43 is bigger than the 21. so let's do rate six over rate five and rate six is 43.3 times 10 to the negative seven and that's k times reactant to the m times reactant to the n and then i really should switch colors there for you uh and this one is 21.6 times 10 to the negative 7 k the m k uh, times to the n. Okay, so now I can plug these in. So I go to rate 6 and I have, I just read it off there. Point two. I like to set it up first and then just read everything off of the table. And then this one is point 0.2. Good, so we know that that's going to cancel. And this is point. 0, 4, 0 to the m, I totally ran out of room here. But 43.3 times 10 negative 7 divided by 21.6, that again becomes 2. Your k's cancel. And let's see, 0. 0.2 to the m divided by 0. 0.2 to the m, that cancels as well. And so you're left with this. So 0. 0.0808 divided by 0. 0.0404, that's 2 as well, raised to the n. This is an n, raised to the n. So just like we did last time, plug in one number at a time, 2 to the 0 gives me 1. That's not right. 2 to the 1 gives me 2. Okay, so n is also equal to 1. Great. So they don't always have to be the same. m and n don't always have to be the same. Uh, in this case, they are. And so what you can do now is plug this back into your generic rate law. So I have rate equals k times NH4 to the 1 and then NO2 to the 1. So that's what we did down here. Um, so rate equals k times NH4 plus to the n, and this is to the n. Since they're both 1, we, you don't even write them in there. But if, if they were 2, then you would definitely want to include them. If they're 0, anything raised to the 0th power is 1, so you can just ignore that concentration because it doesn't affect the rate. That's pretty much what 0th order means. It's not affecting the rate. So the next step is to figure out what the rate constant is. So step one, you do rate two over rate one, rate three over one, whatever you gotta do to solve for m and n. So the first step, you wanna solve for m and n, and then you're gonna take, and I'm not gonna, we'll do this in the next, in the next video. You're gonna take the concentrations from this reaction and the rate, plug them in here, concentrations and a rate, and you can pick any experiment that you want and solve for k, whoa. Solve for k, solve for k, so solve for m and n, and then solve for k, uh, and then after you know k and 
new con they'll give you new concentration so you already know m and n and then you'll solve for the rate so everything's going to keep coming back to this rate loss the first step is really to solve for the rate law and the rate law again looks like this and you want to solve for m and n to get the rate law um, and then you solve for k and then you plug in new concentrations and solve for a new rate so we'll do that in the next video